Hi everyone. So in this video, I'm going to discuss about the summarized features of diuretics. So diuretics and their effect on the functional unit of kidney that is a nephron. So coming towards the basic structure of nephron first we have the glomerulus that contains the afferent and the efferent vessels combining to form the glomerular tuft and the Bowman's capsule containing the visceral and the parietal surface followed by the proximal convoluted tubule proximal convoluted tubule then comes the loop of Henle consisting of the descending and the ascending thick and thin loop of Henle's after that there is distal convoluted tubule and then at the end it all ends at the collecting duct so we have a part of nephron in cortex and the part of nephron in the outer medulla the main parts in the cortex are the glomerulus the proximal convoluted tubule and the distal convoluted tubule while in the outer medulla there is loop of henle containing the ascending and descending limb and the collecting duct so now coming towards a brief summary of action of diuretics on the different parts of nephron as explained earlier in this video sodium sodium is filtered from the bowman's capsule directly and mannitol acts on the proximal convoluted tubule proximal convoluted tubule here so it increases the uh, reabsorption filtration of water hence increasing the fluid loss the carbonic anhydrase inhibitors actually act on the proximal convoluted tubules resulting in the reabsorption of bicarbonates and loss of sodium and water. Remember one thing, wherever the salt goes, that is the sodium, there there the water follows, that is H2O. The loop diuretics act mainly on the thin uh, ascending limb of loop of Henle, the thin ascending limb of loop of Henle, that is this part and uh, it that it is permeable to salts and uh, the results and reabsorption of sodium the potassium and two ions of chloride there is reabsorption of sodium potassium two ions of chloride and excretion of potassium calcium and magnesium here is this so the osmotic diuretics also act on the proximal convoluted tubule and uh, they result in the uh, and they also act on the descending limb of loop of Henle they are permeable to water and filters sugars amino acids and sodium after that I'm going to talk about the thiazides. the thiazides act on the proximal part of the distal convoluted tubule and results in the reabsorption of sodium and chloride uh, while excretion of the two calcium ions here it is Renin also acts on the distal convoluted tubule like this and uh, after that I'm going to talk about the aldosterone and potassium sparing diuretics that uh, uh, that is also the antidiuretic hormone also act on collecting tubules as a result of potassium hydrogen uh, reabsorption while sodium and water excretion. Now coming towards the action of diuretics on the electrolyte concentration and the pH of urine and I have written a summary for you guys and I'm going to um, add these notes to the description as a PDF as well so that you can learn more about it. So coming towards the uh, first this uh, urinary sodium chloride that increases with all diuretics and decreases hence decreases serum sodium chloride as a result. The urinary potassium uh, increases with lube and thiazide diuretics and urinary calcium increases with lube diuretics that decreases the paracellular calcium reabsorption resulting in hypocalcemia. It, uh, it also decreases with thiazides and there is enhanced calcium reabsorption. Now coming towards the blood pH, the effect of diuretics on blood pH uh, may result in two conditions that is acidemia decreased pH and alkalemia that is increased pH of blood. So first we are going to discuss acidemia. So acidemia there is carbonic anhydrase inhibitor. By the action of this the, there is decrease in bicarbonate reabsorption as explained before and uh, potassium sparing diuretics act by blocking the aldosterone that prevents potassium secretion and hydrogen secretion resulting in hyperkalemia 
that results in potassium entering all cells via hydrogen potassium exchanger in exchange of the existing hydrogen ions. After that, uh, there is volume contraction that increases angiotensin 2 uh, angiotensin 2 and increases sodium hydrogen exchange in proximal convoluted tubule that increases by carbonate reabsorption hence contra contraction alkalosis the another term used for this for volume contraction after that i'm going to discuss alkalemia that is increase in ph of blood it occurs by potassium loss that is potassium existing in all cells via hydrogen potassium exchangers and decrease potassium when hydrogen is exchanged for sodium in cortical collecting tubule instead of the potassium. Uh, this results in alkalosis and also sometimes called as paradoxical aciduria. Hope you all understood the last part very well. If not, then you can revisit the video again. And uh, I have made a table that contains all the drugs of the diuretics, the main groups and the drugs containing and consisting of it. Then their mechanism of actions, their clinical uses, adverse effects and contraindications if present. So, mannitol. Mannitol is an osmotic diuretic that increases tubular fluid osmolarity that hence increases the urinary flow and it also decreases the intraocranial and intraocular pressure. So, uh, by anticipating this mechanism, the clinical uses the, uh, if there is any drug overdose, then mannitol is used to, for its excretion and it is also used in increased intracranial pressure and intraocular pressure to lower it down. The adverse effects include dehydration, obviously, as uh, it uh, all moves all the water out of body, hyper and hyponatremia, both can happen, and pulmonary edema. So it is contraindicated in pulmonary edema that occurs in heart failure and anuria. If there is no urine, there is no way of water that is excreted by the mannitol to come out of body. Next group is uh, carbonic anhydrase inhibitors and its drug is acetazole amide. It is a self-limited uh, sodium hydrox uh, sodium bicarbonate diuresis and uh, it, dec it decreases total body bicarbonate stores and alkalinizes urine. It is used in glaucoma, metabolic alkalosis, in altitude sickness that uh, offsets respiratory alkalosis and idiopathic intracranial hypertension as well. Its adverse effects include proximal renal tubular acidosis type 2 RTA, parasthesias, um, ammonia toxicity, sulfa allergy as it contains the sulfa group. So it, uh, if you are going to give this and if there is sulfa allergy, there is going to be an allergic reaction and hypokalemia. It is contraindicated in the condition uh, where there are calcium phosphate stones as it promotes the so for calcium phosphate stone formation and that is insoluble at high pH and it alkalinizes urine, urine pH. So more, so, more so, so stones will be formed. Next group is the uh, loop diuretics. So it contains furosemide, bumetanide, sulfonamide, dorsamide, etc. Its main mechanism of action is inhibition of co-transport system that uh, transports sodium, potassium and two chloride ions of ascending limb, abolish hypertonicity of medulla that prevents urinary concentration, increase prostaglandin E on effect on afferent arteriolar vasodilator that is an afferent arteriolar vasodilator and inhibited by NSAIDs and increases calcium excretion. Its um, a, a clinical use is edematous taste edematous states just such as heart failure, cirrhosis, nephrotic syndrome and pulmonary edema in hypertension and hypercalcemia. Its um, adverse effects are the following and it's uh, remembered as a mnemonic ODANG. So if you write O DANG, D-A-N, G, you are going to remember it well. O for ototoxicity, H for hypokalemia, H for hypomagnesemia, D for dehydration, A for allergy that is sulfa, and uh, then A for alkalosis metabolic, and N for nephritis interstitial, and G for gout.
now those were all the main groups uh, subgroups and most commonly used ones for the diuretics now coming towards the n uh, not so much talked about uh, uh, diuretics that also have effect on the um, nephron as a diures diuretic so it comes first comes the ace inhibitors and utensin converting enzyme inhibitors including the lisinopril ramipril uh, etc uh, the contraindication is in choline esterase inhibitor deficiency and uh, renal artery stenosis that decreases the gfr too much causing renal failure its mechanism includes the that it inhibits um, angiotensin converting enzyme that in, uh, decreases the concentration of the angiotensin 2 at uh, as the angiotensin 1 is not able to convert into angiotensin Two, there is decreased GFR prevent efferent arterial constriction and increases the renin loss of negative feedback due to and prevents inactivation of the bradykinins and this is a potent vasodilator. Hence its clinical use is in hypertension, heart failure and it decreases mortality um, in heart, heart failure patients, protein urea, diabetic nephropathy and also prevents unfavorable heart remodeling. Its adverse effects include cough, angioedema, uh, mainly dry cough basically and in angioedema it uh, like increases bradykinins and teratogen, renal malformations mainly, increased creatinine, decreases GFR, hyperkalemia and hypotension. Then there are ARBs also known as angiotensin 2 receptor blockers um, known as um, including losartan candisartan and velsartan the uh, mechanism of action include blocks binding of angiotensin 2 to angiotensin 1 receptors and uh, do not increase bradykinins and rest is similar to the ace inhibitors as explained before its uh, clinical use is in hypertension, heart failure, protein ureas, uh, chronic kidney disease like diabetic nephropathy with increased to to intolerance to ACE1, angiotensin uh, converting enzyme 1. Its adverse effects include hyperkalemia, decreased GFR, hypotension and it is also teratogenic. Then comes aliskyrin. Aliskyrin, there is Ki for kill and Ren for renin. It kills renin, basically it decreases renin. It, uh, it has a direct uh, action and it's direct renin inhibitor. It uh, um, blocks the conversion of angiotensinogen to angiotensin 1. Its main use is in hypertension. Its adverse effects include hyperkalemia, decreased GFR, hypertension and angioedema. If already taking ACE1s or ARBs and pregnancy, then it is contraindicated in those conditions. I hope you liked my video. Kindly um, like, share and subscribe and uh, wait for more videos because I'm going to be posting um, frequently now. And if you want to understand any topic from me, please do tell me in the comments section below. I'll be available for you guys and thank you so much. So the next group is thiazide diuretics that contains hydrochlorothiazide, the metallozone, the chlorothiazide, clothidone, etc. It inhibits sodium chloride reabsorption in early proximal con distal convoluted tubule that decreases diluting capacity of the nephron. Hence, concentrated urine is formed and decreases the calcium excretion. Its main uh, clinical use is in hypertension, heart failure, idiopathic hypercalciuria, nephrogenic diabetes and spidus and osteoporosis. Its adverse effects are similar to those that um, are like for loop diuretics. So it's hypokalemia, metabolic alkalosis, hyponatremia, hyperglycemia, hyperlipidemia, hyperkalemia, hypercalcemia, hyperuremia and sulfur allergy. So uh, if you remember it, you are gonna know that it's all hyper except for hyponatremia and hypokalemia. I forgot one group that is the uh, ethacrinic ethe acid that is non-sulfonamide in the loop diuretics. So it inhibits co-transport system of sodium potassium and uh, two chloride ions of thick ascending limb of loop of Henle. It's uh, uh, clinical uses in diuresis of the uh, patients with self allergy basically and it is uh, its adverse effects include more ototoxic and rest is the similar as the mnemonic remembered above ODAN. 
After that, there is potassium sparing diuretics that includes pyronolactone, epilirinone, amyloride, and triamterone. Spironolactone, it's, it contains RON and aldosterone also contains RON. So there is competitive aldosterone antagonist in cort cortical collecting duct or tubule and uh, the uh, amyloride and triamterone blocks the sodium channels in cortical collecting duct. Its main uh, clinical uh, use is in hyperaldosteronism potassium depletion, heart failure, hepatic ascites, uh, spironolactone is the drug of choice there, nephrogenic diabetes, insipidus, amyloroid is the uh, drug of choice and anti-androgen that is spironolactone uh, again. So its adverse effects include hyperkalemia also causing arrhythmias, endocrine effects include gynecomastia and it is anti-androgen and also causes metabolic acidosis.